गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माई डियर लिसनर्स लेट स्टार्ट विद द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी द स्टोरी विच वी वेर रीडिंग फ्रॉम यस्टर डे द नेम ऑफ दैट स्टोरी इज लाइफ लाइफ सीक्रेट एंड इट इज इट इट इज बींग रेड फ्रॉम दिस बुक फोक टेल्स ऑफ बेंगा बेंगाल इलेस्ट्रेटेड बाय वैरविक गॉबल and this book was written by Reverend Lal Bihari De. Ah, uh, Reverend Lal Bihari De, and ah, uh, so let's start with the next part of this book. So at the end of this, ah. Uh, at the end we came to know that the dalim kumar was dead due to the conspiracy which were, which was uh, cooked uh, by his step mother duo queen so let's start what had happened so we can uh, we will know what had happened after that when the news of the death of his son and the heir reached the king he was plunged into an ocean of grief which was not lessened in any degree by the intelligence of the recovery of the duo queen he wept over his dead dalim so bitterly that his courtiers were apprehensive of a permanent derangement of his mental powers the king would not allow the dead boy of his son Uh, the dead body of his son to be either buried or burned he could not realize the fact of his son's death it was so entirely ca- uh, causeless and so terribly sudden he ordered the dead body to be removed to one of his garden houses in the suburbs of the city and to be laid there instead he ordered that all sorts of provisions should be stored away in that house as if the young prince as if the young prince needed them for his refection uh, orders were issued that the house should be kept locked up day and night and that no one should go into the uh, into it except dalim's most intimate friend the son of the king's prime minister who was entrusted with the key of the house and who obtained the privilege of entering in once in 24 hours as wing to her great loss the shuo queen lived in retirement the king gave up his nights entirely to duo queen the latter in order to allay suspicion used to put aside the gold necklace at night and as fate had ordained that dalim should be in the state of death only during the time that the necklace was round the neck of the queen he passed into the state of life whenever the necklace was laid aside accordingly dalim revived every night as the duo queen every night put away the necklace and died again the next morning when the queen put it on when dalim became reanimated at night he ate whatever food he liked for of a uh, food he liked for of such there was a plentiful stock in the garden house walked about on the premises and meditated on the singularity of his lot dalim's friend who visited him only during the day found him always lying a lifeless corpse but what struck him after some days was the singular fact that the body remained in the same state in which he saw it on the first day of his visit there was no sign of putrefaction except that it was lifeless and pale there were no symptoms of corruption it was apparently quite fresh unable to account for so strange a phenomena he determined to watch the corpse more closely and to visit it not only during the day but sometimes also at night the first night that he paid his visit he was astounded to see his dead friend sauntering about in the garden at first he thought the figure might be only the ghost of his friend but on feeling him and otherwise examining him he found the apparition to be veritable flesh and blood 
Dalim related to his friend all the circumstances connected with his death and they both concluded that he revived at night only because the duo queen put aside her necklace when the king visited her as the life of the prince dependent depended on the necklace the two friends laid their heads together to uh, devise if possible some plans by which they might get possession of it night after night they consulted together but they could not think of any feasible scheme at length the gods brought about the deliverance of dalim kumar in a wonderful manner Some years before the time of which we are speaking the sister of Bidhata Purusha was delivered of a daughter the anxious mother asked her brother what he had written on her child's forehead to which Bidhata Purusha replied that she should get married to a dead bridegroom maddened as she became with grief at the prospect of such a dreary destiny for her daughter she yet thought it useless to remonstrate with her brother for she well knew that he never changed what he once wrote as the child grew in years she became exceedingly beautiful but the mother could not look upon her with pleasure in consequence of the portion allotted to her by her divine brother when the girl came to marriageable uh, when the girl came to marriageable age the mother resolved to flee from the ca- country with her and thus avert her dreadful destiny but the decrees of fate cannot thus be overruled in the course of their wandering the mother and daughter arrived at the gate of that very garden house in which dalim kumar lay it was evening the girl said she was thirsty and wanted wanted to drink water the mother told her daughter to sit at the gate while she went to search for drinking water in some neighboring hut in the meantime the girl through curiosity pushed the door of the garden house which opened of itself she then went in and saw a beautiful palace and was wishing to come out when the door shut itself of its own accord so that she could not get out as as night came on the prince uh, on the prince revived as the night came on the prince revived and walking about saw a human figure near the gate he went up to it and found it was and found it was a girl of surprising beauty on being asked who she was she told dalim kumar all the details of her little history how her uncle the divine vidhata purusha wrote on her for it at her bra- um, at her birth that she should get married to a dead bridegroom how her mother had no pleasure in her life life at the prospect of so terrible destiny and how therefore on the approach of her womanhood with a view to avert so dre- uh, dreadful a uh, catastrophe she had left her house with her and wandered in various places how they came to the gate of the garden house and how her mother had now gone in search of drinking water for her dalim kumar hearing her simple and pathetic story said i am the dead bridegroom and you must get married to me come with me to the house how can you be said to be a dead bridegroom when you are standing and speaking to me said the girl you will understand it afterwards rejoined the prince come now and follow me the girl followed the prince into the house as she had been fasting the whole day the prince hospitably entertained her as for the mother of the girl the sister of the divine vidhata purusha she returned to the gate of the garden house after it was dark cried out for her daughter and getting no answer went away in search of her in the hearts in the neighborhood it is said that after this she was not seen anywhere 
so my friends i am going to add this to this uh, story till uh, till uh, after this point and we will finish this story tomorrow but before finishing for this uh, today i must say uh, who is vidhata purusha as per this narration vidhata purusha is a deity that predetermines all the events of the life of man or woman and writes on the forehead of the child on the sixth day of its birth a brief precis of them a brief precis of them so uh, the sister of vidhata purusha even, even she she was helpless in front of vidhata purusha the story uh, what he has written on our forehead it has to it is inevitable we have to face it and we have to live our life that way now this beautiful picture actually depicting our beautiful princess and as well as the prince within this garden house and this is how they first met and so my dear friends today i am going to arrest my uh, uh, i am going to stop here and i will wish i and i wish that uh, you are enjoying this story and uh, so um the next part is going to come tomorrow so till then have a beautiful day and tada